Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to um, load a 3D model into a JavaFX scene graph and we're going to animate it. So these are the two things that we're going to do in this tutorial. Um, so first of all, I'll walk you through what I've got here. Um, this is a going to be a GitHub repo. So you can obtain all the models, or there's one model, from that repo as well as the license for the um, library that we're going to use and the library itself. This is a third-party library which comes from interactivemesh.org and I suggest that you have a look around there because they've got lots of uh, 3D model loading libraries. I don't believe there is a Maven version of it so we have to use this Uber jar. I have this package and a matching directory under the resources um, directory which contains all these files, which is essentially a single scooter uh, 3D model with its normals and um, materials, etc. And um, yeah, let's just start getting the basics ready. Um, I'm using JavaFX 8 and Java 8 because I think the library that we're going to use um, requires that. So this is the typical stuff. Now instead of create content, we're going to create a scene, because if you follow the 3D snake tutorial, then you'll know that we'll need a slightly different scene um, for 3D stuff rather than we, um, the one that we use for 2D. We're going to have a root. Um, let's make it HD and pass true to make sure that there is a depth buffer so we can see 3D stuff. Um, as we should. We'll need a camera, which is a perspective camera, and we're going to move the camera uh, back a little bit so that we can see the model because the model will be spawned at the origin. And Z axis goes from you towards the screen, which means minus will move it, will move the camera back to yourself. We will need a root node, which will contain our model, and we're going to represent the model as a group as well, which we're going to load using this URL. <coughs> and that URL is essentially um, the resource file, which is where the scooter object, uh, where the scooter file lives rps.obj. Um, make sure the directory and the package, the directory under the resources and the package name are um, the same. Because otherwise, you won't be able to find this resource URL. Um, right. So, model root is what is going to store the mesh views that we're going to load using this importer. The importer is going to read from this URL and for each mesh view that we're going to load, we're going to attach it um, to the model root. And then we're going to return the model root. Right, so we're going to add the only thing that we have, the model, to the root and if we've done everything correctly, then we should see a scooter model in our window. Nice. So we've done the first part, which is loading off the object, uh, the model. Now we're going to animate a part of it. Well, first of all, we probably want to rotate by doing that. So we're going to add a new transformation, which is rotate. 90 degrees along um, or around the y-axis and as you can see it will rotate it in a way so that you can see both um, rims and tires so all these things that different have different colors different materials um, are different mesh views in a single model and we can animate 
each mesh view separately, which is really nice. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to animate um, by finding. So if you open the OBJ file, which is basically just lots of text, lots of data, you'll find that there is a view called rib, uh, rim front, and there is one other called rim rear. So what we're going to do is, first of all, obtain the children of the model, which will give us all the mesh views. We're going to then filter the views so that their IDs equal to either rim front or rim rear. So essentially, we're going to obtain those two rears, or two rims that we can then uh, animate. For each such view, we are going to create a rotate transition uh, with duration over a third of a second. I'm going to rotate this particular view. Set um, cycle count pretty much um, infinite. Then we're going to set the axis. Um, once you've loaded the view, um, or the model. If you start thinking about where the rims are and how you want to rotate them, then the axis that pierces, or rather kind of, it's very difficult to explain without the actual thing. Um, so let's open this thing up. Uh, remember we rotated this model 90 degrees. So if you imagine a line that is perpendicular to the plane where the rims are, then this line uh, will pierce um, that plane. And originally, the model was rotated 90 degrees backwards along um, across around the y-axis, which gives us the x-axis that pierces through this plane. So that's the axis that we're going to use to rotate. Um, it would probably be better to create a separate um, vector maths for 3D tutorial rather than try to explain everything in one go. Um, set by angle, we want to rotate 360 degrees so that it comes back around to zero degrees essentially. And we're going to set the interpolator to linear. If you've done the interpolator tutorial, then you'll know that um, interpolators allow us to change the rate of the animation, and we want it to be linear. So it will animate the exact same amount every frame. Finally, we will play the animation, and we also need to actually call this method. So what we have now is, um, well, we're animating those rims along, around the x-axis. It's translation along the axis and rotation around the axis. So we're rotating them around the x-axis and we're rotating them 360 degrees every third of a second. You can also do exactly the same um, to the tires around the rims, and this will create a kind of moving animation, although the scooter itself won't be moving. To move the whole thing, you can create a translate transition and apply this on this particular object, which will move the whole scooter across the screen. And these are some extensions that you might want to perform on this tutorial. Apart from that, uh, just to recap, we've loaded a 3D model in this tutorial using this third-party library, and we have animated parts of that model. Right, don't forget to vote on the next video, and thanks for watching.